Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Shadowlands video. So, professions, they've always been a part of WoW, but in times gone by, they were broader, they were less directed, they were a bit more important. And really, that importance of professions has varied wildly over uh, over time. You know, at one time, it was core to gearing. It was greatly important for, say, your pre-raid bis. Uh, but recently, though, with the raid tiers having their intent systems and gear sliding into the RNG ditch, you only really having two bits you could get from raids, professions have kind of been weird. They've taken a bit of a back seat. And rather than Blizzard designing them to have more interactions and systems, like an economy, they kind of redid them to be quest content in Legion, and then some of that design carried forward into BFA. It's all been a bit bizarre. So now that Shadowlands Alpha is here, I'm happy to say that I'm really excited now that I've seen what's up. Uh, professions used to be one of the main things that I did, especially, oh man, the metagem markets of Wrath and Kata, the ore shuffles, oh I loved it. Thus far, I can say this, the core of Shadowlands uh, profession updates is pretty interesting, and it is optional reagents. You'll be able to add these when crafting your armor, and you could give that an increased item level, a guaranteed secondary stat, or a special effect. Yes, it's not RNG anymore. You know, that's uh, that's three pretty, pretty cool things, and yes, it's just three boxes in the UI that may seem like a minor addition, but they've got the potential to solve just a whole bunch of persistent problems that crafting professions have had and really drag them into the modern day, freshen them up a bit. But there's even more because, you know, we've also seen a bit of the classic influence on the professions as well, as well as more interconnectedness between the professions uh, that's also at the core of like what's driving the optional reagents. So that's great. Plus, we've seen a whole bunch um, in the gear modification department, some of it with more of a classic flavor. So, yeah, let's just get into it. Let's actually look at how these systems are going to work, and I mean, man, this is really good stuff. I'm really excited. Okay, so you will open your UI, and you will find the piece of gear that you want to craft, but what will be different is that, yes, it'll have its usual slots for its base materials, its ore, its cloth, whatever, but below that, you'll see three optional reagent slots. Now, each one of these can fit a range of items that are crafted by other professions, and depending on the input, yes, you'll be able to change the stats on the crafted bit of gear that you're going to make. This is a direct way to affect the power of the gear that you make as opposed to the RNG based secondary stats or maybe even the item level things that many crafts have had recently. Now the optional reagents fall into three different categories with each addressing a fundamental, I guess, problem that professions have faced. So the first increases its item level, whatever you're making. Now this sort of engages with the problem of, you know, just crafted gear kind of being irrelevant at a certain point, right? Like in the past, an expansion would launch, you've had, you know, you'd have all your base sets of gear you can make, and bar the raid-specific ones, I mean, all that stuff would just be completely pointless after a tier, right? It would become irrelevant so fast. And then all too often, just so many parts of the professions wouldn't really keep up to the patches. Well, if this stuff was supported throughout the patch cycle, and I think it would be, then yeah, we could have more longevity in our crafted gear, which would be really good. You know, you could have recipes from the base patch be augmented in, say, patch 9.2 with new reagents that bring them up to power, or maybe give you some new customization options. So there's that for item level. Then the second category uh, will add a secondary stat, such as, you know, haste, crit, dodge, mastery, directly. And this steps away from the sometimes bewildering RNG of the last two expansions. I think this is the most practical practical part of the system for players, and it really does like just match up with Blizzard's wider plan for player agency. And I think it's going to feel really nice. I mean, you know, you'll have that unpruned spell book, you won't be having titan forging in your gear, you'll have agency over your secondary stats for your crafts, that's really cool. Then uh, the third category adds uh, special effects to your armor, such as Beast Slayer on helms and bracers. It's kind of reminiscent of getting your set gloves in Wrath. Uh, so these special effects, they seem to have a fairly wide range of like abilities or, you know, just effects, whatever, and uh, they'll generally just give you a bit more flavor to your armor. Now, to get a full measure of these special effects, effects and uh, why players are going to, I think, be a little bit more friendly to each other or at least have to rely on each other a bit more. Let's just go and run through what we know about some of the professions so far. Okay, so only certain crafting professions will be using optional reagents, but every profession will be able to make them. So to increase the item level of a recipe, you'll need a word of power, and that's from inscription. For a socket, you'll need a jewel crafter to make you a jewel cluster. The uh, special effect reagents are um, where like the professions, uh, like economy is really going to take off here, I think, and it's just going to be a lot more interconnected. So alchemy, right? 
they can, um, they've got concoctions for the cloaks, where your cloak can actually extend the duration of your flask effects and well-fed bonuses, a really big gold saver. Then blacksmiths will be able to add slayer augments to helms and bracers. Uh, those can increase the damage to humanoids, um, aberrations, beasts, or undead. There's uh, then the, I think, Listerite? Listerite Spikes. Now, these will occasionally just deal some additional damage. Uh, and right now, we don't know much about enchanting yet, but what's there seems uh, seems exciting. Uh, so right now, these effects only seem to be available for the enchants on the shoulder slots, and they're things like adding damaging uh, magical effects. One of them is a Burst of Cold, which also applies a slow. Now, that could be really cool. It'd be great to see what else is planned, but so far, just the promise of these is so good for me. I mean, think about, you know, maybe your last minute arena play if you've got that shoulder effect uh, maybe it's a five yard blink or a, a long cooldown counter spell they could add a little bit more in there and it could be exciting but that's not it because moving past the optional reagents well there's something a little bit more classic feeling. So early data mining revealed a bunch of old school feeling things like weapon oils and sharpening stones. They seem to just be minor stat increases, but yeah, they'll add like another important interaction for blacksmiths and for alchemists as an example. Now on that, the alchemists actually seem to be getting a fairly unique thing going on with their potions, uh, some of which have actually got bonus effects if your weapon is using a certain type of oil. So there's that going on. And then for the enchants, well, we're back to having chest, cloak, boot, bracer, glove, and weapon enchants. That's way more slots, way more ways to customize your character, a lot more than BFA, that's for sure. And that'll just give enchanters so much more to do. Then for the engineers, I mean, they're once again getting belt enchants, and then leather workers, while they do have nerf drums, which is a little bit sad, uh, they do also get um, new armor kits going on. Now, much of this is stuff that was normal back in the day, but was just removed, right, in the name of streamlining, with the power bonuses that sort of came from all those enchants and things, being moved away from the professions, which was a player-driven system, and just into RNG, and Titan Forging, right? Out of the player's hands. So with these changes, I think we'll have a more vibrant economy as well. That'll be really important for cre like creating gameplay. So yeah, let's talk about the wider economy. These profession changes, I think, could shake up the economy real hard and hopefully will give us more avenues to make some money. We'll have craftable items that will remain relevant for longer in an expansion, and that means that the underlying economy will actually last longer. Then agency and what stat we put on our gear, that removes some RNG frustrations, lets us target stat compositions, and again, all those optional reagents themselves they're made from raw materials, and that just adds even more interactions into the economy, which I think is a very healthy thing indeed. Certainly, the further we get away from that oversimplified abomination that was Warlords of Draenor crafting, the, the better, for sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, look, we will have to consider how all of this stuff will combine and actually work, but between this stuff and the new revamped auction house, I think we're in for a way better gold-making experience than we've had... Wow, I mean, in quite some time indeed. But as good as all of that, I think absolutely does sound just at face value, there is still due diligence that we've got to do with the alpha, right? We still need to ask those questions and uh, you know, we need to critique things when they appear. So, you know, how will the optional reagents actually work when they go live? What will they do to the economy? You know, how does, say, how does engineering more fit into all of this? I mean, we haven't seen that much of it yet. It certainly does seem like the perfect prof profession for, um, you know, systems and like the optional reagents, then how will we like how will the balance go? Right? Will the raw materials be absurdly expensive? Will people feel like they need to get tokens to do raids? Uh, you know, will the magical effects be overpowered? Will they be meta-defining? Will they homogenize classes too much? Or will they just be so weak the whole system is trivial? And then even past that whole system, what about archaeology? I mean, come on, few things in WoW have got so much promise, but such a boring delivery. And then finally, and I know this is not really that feasible, but I just want to say this, put it out there. I'd love to be able to change my armor's appearance via professions. Things like, can I craft a little belt pouch? Like a little add-on? Maybe tint changes. I mean, maybe we could get some tintable armor that the crafting professions could make and then could be dyed and changed. That could be really cool. Um, then I think another thing I'd like to know is what's their plan for profession content? You know, will we once again be doing Legion-style questing? Will we get patch um, uh, 8.1-style questing? Hard to know. One thing as well, for me, bop materials. They can be a pain in the ass. And I've disagreed with bop materials being real since the Motes of Harmony and Mists of Pantari, which initially were bop, and that mostly killed profession gameplay for me. And the same goes for Expulsum. 
oh, I'd love to see Blizzard embrace professions as their own type of gameplay and just the economy being a really important thing and maybe allow players to sell Expulsum, right? Just buy it from another player. I mean, hell, I'm sure the many players who don't want to do crafting but do get Expulsum would love to be able to sell it to a crafter. That would just make the economy a bit more efficient. And then there is finally one thing, Torghast. So I don't know how much is tied into it right now, but there's a lot of potential, right? The potential for Torghast specific things is massive. Torghast food, Torghast potions, all things that could be wacky and overpowered and crazy. I just love to see some experimentation on that front. And uh, actually then on that topic, you know, we will be able to craft our own legendaries in this expansion. And while that system's not in the game yet, from what Blizz have said, I actually do imagine we'll be using something very similar to this optional reagent system. And that's based on what we know so far, where it seems like we can make a legendary for whatever slot we want, and then we can customize that legendary with like its own effects. And that itself is a massive win for player agency. It's one that I think, well, I'm very confident uh, that that would feel far better than Legion's just random as hell acquisition. So there you go. That's uh, that's pretty much it for our first look at Professions. It is all super early right now. We will have to wait a bit longer just to see what makes it onto subsequent builds. But I mean, rest assured, once Professions are fully testable, we will be giving you a big deep dive look into them. But for now, look, I am happy that there is less RNG, that we've got more control over our stats. The promise of a more vibrant economy is genuinely exciting to me. And there is nothing I would love more than to be able to go back to, you know, doing my ore shuffles, right? Having a bunch of max level characters for all my professions. That seriously drove weeks of gameplay for me back in the day. And I guess just that simplification and sort of reduction of interactions within the economy that happened over years and years and the bind on pickup materials that just eroded the profession gameplay for me so much. So just the prospect of some of that being more like more of a thing you can do now, that really does get me excited. So yeah, there you go. That's it for me. Let me know what do you think about professions and what would you like to see for professions? Let me know in those comments down below. Thank you very much for watching this video. And with that, I'll see you next time.